Ecclesia Seventh Day Adventist, a revival of original Adventism and ancient Christianity, presents Escape for Thy Life, a program explaining prophecy. Evolution. Escape for thy life. This is Brother Medina for Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist, and please let us start with a word of prayer. Loving Father, please be with us and give us the ability to explain ourselves. Help our listening audience to learn and to have an informed understanding and an informed decision with regards to Middle Eastern affairs. In Jesus' holy name we pray, with thanks even unto thee. Amen. Now, my dear people, we, our study today is Israelis and Palestinians Part 2. Israelis and Palestinians Part 2. We are giving a follow-up study to what was done before. However, in this study, it is less about talking from me, myself, and more about showing you video footage of actual things that have been going on. We know that the media is slanted towards justifying Israel and Jews and all that they have done because the media is Jewish controlled. But there are a lot of evidences and a lot of uh, what we call video footage in other places that shows you what has been going on. We want you to see the real facts as it is, and we want to give you evidence by showing you here on this program. That is what this program is all about. Not much about talking, but much about showing you video footage of realities. However, we need to look at just one scripture here with regards to this whole thing. And if we turn to uh, John chapter 8, here is how Jesus regarded the Jewish people. John chapter 8 and verse 44. Remember, Jesus was a Jew. And here is what he said about them. I quote, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. So Christ is showing they will do this, a prophecy. He goes on, He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. 
end of quote. So the two things Jesus identified Jews that do not believe in Christ with is being murderers and liars. And he says that this is what they will do. So we, we must expect Jews to be doing a lot of murders and lying quite a lot. The murders are, today takes place in a very large way in Palestine in what happens on the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip with regards to the Israeli treatments of the Palestinians. And the lying is through the media. They lie right through to cover up themselves. This is the reason why this film is about showing you clips about what has been going on with regards to these things. In this first clip, we want to show you what Mr. George Galloway, a British parliamentarian, says about the Israelis and the international community. Pay attention to this clip. And on the 6th of December, in just a few weeks' time, we will leave London again with a British and American convoy of aid. We hope it will be 500 vehicles long, five miles long, driving through Europe and Turkey and Syria and Jordan and Egypt until we arrive in Gaza. And I hope Malaysia will be represented on that convoy. I hope the name of Malaysia can be present somehow on that convoy. But the reason we're having to do this, and they're all just drops in the ocean, is because the international community continues to punish the victims of terrorism and reward the perpetrators of terrorism in the form of the State of Israel, a country which has broken more international laws than all the countries of the world put together and yet which is greeted with a red carpet whilst its victims are called terrorists. The last time I spoke here I told you about Saint Augustine and his description of the encounter between Alexander the Great and a pirate. Ordering the pirate to halt, Alexander demanded, how dare you terrorize these waters as a thief. And the pirate answered, how dare you terrorize the whole world, you who can call yourself an emperor and can call other men as you please. That's the world order that we have today. Those who call themselves emperors invent their own laws and invent their own permissions to bring death and war and devastation and siege and sanction and occupation upon others. And that's what we have to change. In this second clip, we want to show you that Palestinian Christians are murdered by Israelis with the aid of Christian America. Now, this happens a lot. And remember, 30% of Palestinians were Christians. And so, we want to show you this happening in this clip. Most Christians in America have no idea that hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Christians have suffered terribly from the Zionists when the Zionists took over Palestine. The birthplace of Jesus Christ, Bethlehem, for instance, actually had a majority of Palestinian Christians in it at one time. The Zionists destroyed hundreds of Christian churches, murdered Christian clergy, destroyed Christian schools, they killed or maimed thousands of Palestinian Christians. Israel also later invaded Lebanon twice and bombed and maimed and murdered thousands more Christians there. In all, Israel has killed and maimed tens of thousands of Christians. That's your own Christian brothers and sisters. Today, there are 400,000 Palestinian Christian refugees who have suffered horribly at the hands of the Zionists. They were driven from their homes, their farms, their businesses, and their homeland by the Zionists. Now, how can any Christian support Zionist Israel and the murder of fellow Christians by anti-Christian Judaic? Now, Israelis are supported by Christians, yet they routinely blaspheme Jesus and Christians. Observe this clip happening on an Israeli uh, television station, and it is speaking in Hebrew, so you will have the translation. This is what they routinely and regularly do, so pay attention to this clip. <laughs> The 
הנוצרים מספרים לכם שישו הלך על המים בכנרת, אבל זה לא נכון. ישו היה שמן מאוד, והתבייש לצאת מהבית. לא כל שכן, ללכת עם בגד ים לכנרת. <laughs> הנוצרים מציירים לכם את ישו ככה, אבל האיורים האלה רחוקים מהמציאות. בגלל ההתמכרות שלו ללחם הקודש, מגיל שלוש, ישו היה בשומרי משקל. <laughs> ככה הוא היה נראה, אילו היה מגיע לגיל ארבעים. אם הם לא היו מכחישים את השואה, זה מה שאנחנו עושים כאן עכשיו מדי ערב, אנחנו מכחישים כל מיני דברים שהכנסייה הנוצרית אומרת לכם. אתה זוכר, אתמול הכחשנו את זה שישו הלך על המים? נכון. הנה הסרט השני. הנוצרים מספרים לכם שמריה, אמו של ישו, הייתה בתולה. אבל זה לא נכון. ההוכחה לכך היא פשוטה. כשיוחנן המטביל היה תוקע לה במפתיע שתי אצבעות במותניים, מריה לא הייתה קופצת. חוץ מזה, אם מריה באמת הייתה בתולה, היא לא הייתה מציגה צעצועי מין חדשים בתוכנית הלילה של יוספוס פלביוס. <אח> האמת היא שבגיל 15, מריה נכנסה להיריון מחבר לכיתה, והוריה רצו למסור אותה למנזר. <אח> אבל היות שישו עוד לא נולד, ולא הייתה נצרות, לא היה גם מנזר. <אח> והוריה של מריה השאירו אותה במגרש כדורגל. הייתה מריה לילה סוער במלון עם נבחרת כנען. אל תאמינו לה. Observe what Mr. Jim Trafficant, an ex-congressman, had to say about the Israeli stranglehold of the U.S. government, of both parties in Congress. Observe what he said. We have a stranglehold on it. I said that on the Greta Von Susten show when I got out. I was probably the hottest uh, interview in the country. But when I made that statement, you didn't see me on TV no more. I believe that Israel has a powerful stranglehold on the American government. They control both members of the House, the House and the Senate. They have us involved in wars of which we have little or no interest. Our children are coming back in body bags. Our nation is bankrupt over these wars. And if you open your mouth, you get targeted. And if they don't beat you at the poll, they'll put you in prison. All right, explain to me what you see as, you know, why you target or why you have a grudge against the Israelis. The grudge is not necessarily a grudge. It's an objective assessment that no one will have the courage to speak about. They're controlling much of our foreign policy. They're influencing much of our domestic policy. Wolfowitz is under Secretary of Defense, manipulated President Bush number two back into Iraq. They pushed definitely, definitely to try and get Bush before he left to move into Iran. We're conducting expansionist policy of Israel and everybody's afraid to say it. They control much of the media, they control much of the commerce of the country, and they control powerfully both bodies of the Congress. They own the Congress. Are you an anti-Semite? No, I'm not. That's exactly what they're going to say. And I expect that. What I am is an American. And you see, I think America comes first. And we have a one-sided foreign policy in the Mideast. But when I made that statement, you didn't see me on TV no more. Now, let's just think about how powerful they are. Look at all the talk show hosts. Some are very conservative. Some are very liberal. They're diametrically opposed on every issue, but they all sing out of the same hymn book on Israel because they control our government, they control our media, they control the finances of this country. And I'm not anti-Semite. I'm not against Israel. I think Israel, in their aggressiveness, is going to end up hurting their country in the long run. But America has gone too far now. We haven't been objective in the Mideast. We've invited and we have in fact imported terrorism to our shores over our policies. In this clip we are showing you ex-president Carter, who at one, at one time had negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. Observe whom he identified as the real troublesome party in the negotiations. Welcome back to Hardball. We're back with the 39th President of the United States, Jimmy Carter. His new book is called Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. And President Carter, why did you use the word apartheid in the book's title? Well, let's look at the entire title, if you don't mind. The first word is Palestine, 
which involves the land that belongs to the Palestinians, not the Israelis. I didn't refer to Israel because there's no semblance of anything relating to apartheid within the nation of Israel. And I also emphasize the word not, uh, that is peace and not apartheid. That's what I hope to accomplish with this book, is some move toward that goal. But there's no doubt that within the occupied territories, Palestinian land, that there is a horrendous example of apartheid. The uh, occupation of Palestinian land, the confiscation of that land that doesn't belong to Israel, the building of settlements on it, the colonization of that land, and then the connection of those isolated but multiple settlements, more than 200 of them, with each other by highways on which Palestinians can't travel and quite often where Palestinians cannot even cross. <clears throat> so the persecution of the Palestinians now under the occupying territories is in a, under the occupation forces is one of the worst examples of human rights deprivation that I know. And uh, I think even, it's... Even worse though than a place like Rwanda? Yes, I think, yes. You mean you're now? Saying, yes, you're, yeah, saying, yeah, I you're think the impression now of the Israelis, of the Palestinians by the Israelis is worse than a situation in Africa like the oppression of Rwandas and the, uh, and the Civil War. I, I'm not going back into ancient history about Rwanda, but right now the, the persecution of the Palestinians is one of the worst examples of human rights abuse I know because the Palestinians... But you're talking are, about right now. You're not talking about, say, I'm not talking about ancient history. Ago. No. Oh, Rwanda wasn't ancient history. It was just a few years ago. You, you can talk about Iran, Rwanda if you want to. I want to talk about Okay. Palestine. Uh, what, what is being done to the Palestinians now is horrendous in their own territory by the occupying powers, which is Israel. <clears throat> They've taken away all the basic human rights of the Palestinians, as was done in South Africa against the blacks. And I make it very plain in this book that the uh, apartheid is not based on racism, as it was in South Africa, but it's based on the desire of a minority of Israelis to acquire land that belongs to the Palestinians and to retain that land and then to exclude the Palestinians from their own property and subjugate them so that they can't arouse and demonstrate their disapproval of being robbed of their own property. That's what's happening in, in the West Bank and, and the people in this country, in America, never know about this, they never discuss this, there's no debate about it, there's no criticism of Israel in this country, and in, other, in Israel, there's a, there is an intense debate about the issues in this book. In I this will, country, no. I agree. I mean, I wish we had that sort of debate that they're having in Israel, I wish we had that in the United States, but give us a sort of sense, how much of the responsibility for the conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, do you think belongs to the Israelis for their tactics like seizing land and occupying territory that didn't belong to them? How much of it is the responsibility of the Palestinians for their suicide terror attacks and their bombings within Israel proper? Well, as a matter of fact, the, the basic cause of the conflict is a sustained occupation of other people's land by the Israelis. And, and this is a direct violation of United Nations resolutions. It's a direct violation of the International Quartet's roadmap. It's a direct violation of the commitments that leaders of, of Israel have made in the past at Camp David when I was president and in Oslo promising that Israel would withdraw from occupied territories. They have failed to do so. In response to that, and I'm not excusing them, there have been acts of violence. As a matter of fact though, Hamas the number one accused persons of, uh, of violence have not committed uh, an act of suicide bombing that caused an Israeli life now since the August of 2004. And I hope that, that they won't do that anymore. Other uh, participants of the Palestinian society, smaller ones, have committed, have committed some atrocities. But the loss of life uh, in the entire occupied territories has been horrendous and has been caused by... Now, in these clips that we are going to show you, you're going to see that the Israelis themselves claim that they control American foreign policy. You're going to hear what the ex-Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Olmert, said, and you're going to hear what was Mr. Netanyahu, his current Prime Minister, but who was Prime Minister before, what he said also. And th these two clips are going to show you it. And I spoke to him. I told him, you can't vote in favor of this resolution. He said, listen, I don't know about it. I didn't see it. I'm not familiar with the phrasing. I told him, I'm familiar with it. You can't vote in favor. Video of Bush's presentation shows he was never interrupted and did not leave the stage early. 
But Olmert says Bush then called Secretary Rice and told her to abstain. He gave an order to the Secretary of State and she did not vote in favor of it. A resolution she cooked up, phrased, organized and maneuvered for. She was left pretty shamed, abstaining from voting on the resolution. U.S. government officials have vigorously denied Olmert's version of events. So this idea that somehow she was turned around on this issue is 100 percent completely untrue. Some of what we've seen is not accurate. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, discuss. I know the State Department has done that, and, and as Secretary Rice was asked about it last night, and I, I don't really have more to add to it. On Tuesday, a spokesman from Olmert's office, Mark Regev, said the Prime Minister stands by his remarks. The U.S. State Department says there are no plans to contact Olmert about the apparent discrepancies. The Israeli government, if they you know, feel, uh, feel necessary, they will clarify, correct the record, whatever. I don't know. All I can do is offer the facts uh, as uh, they are from the American side. That lack of action may leave the impression that Washington's diplomatic decisions are being controlled by its firm and loyal ally, Israel. Kath Turner, Al Jazeera, Washington. United Arab Emirates paper The National reports that the contents of a secretly recorded video threaten to gravely embarrass Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Obama administration. The film was shot, apparently without Netanyahu's knowledge, nine years ago, when the government of Ariel Sharon had started reinvading the main cities of the West Bank to crush Palestinian resistance in the early stages of the Second Intifada. On a visit to a home in the settlement of Ofra in the West Bank to pay condolences to the family of a man killed in a Palestinian shooting attack, he makes a series of unguarded admissions about his first period as prime minister from 1996 to 1999. He tells the family that he deceived the United States president at the time, Bill Clinton, into believing he was helping implement the Oslo Accords, the U.S.-sponsored peace process between Israel and the Palestinians, by making minor withdrawals from the West Bank while actually entrenching the occupation. He boasts that he thereby destroyed the Oslo process. He dismisses the United States as, quote, easily moved to the right direction and calls high levels of popular American support for Israel absurd. He also suggests that far from being defensive, Israel's harsh military repression of the Palestinian uprising was designed chiefly to crush the Palestinian Authority led by Yasser Arafat so that it could be made more pliable for Israeli diktats. The contemptuous view of Washington Netanyahu demonstrates in the film will confirm the suspicions of many observers, including Palestinian leaders, that his current professions of good faith should not be taken seriously. More significantly, he has so far avoided engaging meaningfully in the limited talks the White House is promoting with the Palestinians, while the pace of settlement building in the West Bank has been barely affected by the 10-month freeze due to end in September. In the meantime, planning officials have repeatedly approved large new housing projects in East Jerusalem and the West Bank that have undercut the negotiations and will make the establishment of a Palestinian state viable or otherwise far less likely. Yours is a voice of criticism we don't often hear in the United States. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government, um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. And the, the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong. And they are strong in this country. As you know, uh, they have power, which it's okay, they are talented people and they have power, money and uh, media and other things. And their attitude is Israel, my country, right or wrong, the identification. And they are not ready to hear criticism. And it's very easy to blame people who criticize certain acts of the Israeli government as anti-Semitics and to bring up the Holocaust and the suffering of the Jewish people and that's, that justify everything we do to the Palestinians.
Now we are often told in the media of Palestinian terrorists. Palestinian children are terrorists, they have bombs and they have guns and they're shooting Israelis. We are always told this in the media to paint the Palestinians in such a horrible way. But the media never tell us that, that, that Israeli parents, many of them, train their children to use all kind of sophisticated weapons to murder Palestinians. So in this footage here, you're going to see uh, Israeli children carrying sophisticated weapons. They are allowed to do this by the government of Israel. And they carry these weapons and they're, tra they're training with these weapons to kill Palestinians. Now the media does not show you this, but we want you to see this also. In this clip, you're going to observe what ex-president Nixon and the world's greatest evangelist at that time, Mr. Billy Graham, had to say about the Israelis. They knew what was going on, and they actually said it on phone. And this phone conversation was illegally tapped. But we want you to hear what they discussed about the Israelis and the Jews on the phone. So pay attention to this clip. Billy, I've been a little trouble reaching you. My, well, I apologize. <laughs> I've been traveling uh, all over the place. You know, we've got the still got the problems. Isn't that a horrible thing? There's Israeli shooting down that plane. I mean, the shoot down a unarmed 707. Good heavens! I mean, that's worse than what they did at the Olympics. The other side. There's two other points. Uh, one is the front page of papers over the weekend carried the story that they're talking about expelling all Christians from Israel. Wasn't that nice? And uh, then the second point is that the Jews in this country are just raising a big, uh, and they are damning Campus Crusade and damning uh, uh, so forth. They are going right after the church, and, and, and there's a great deal of feeling beginning to rise. It's happened in Spain, it's happened in Germany, it's happening, and now it's going to happen in America if these people don't start behaving. Well, you know, I told you one time that the Bible talks about two kinds of Jews. One is called the synagogue of Satan. They're the ones putting out the pornographic literature. They're the ones putting out these obscene films. Like the thing in Time Magazine and, and, and then Newsweek. Ruth canceled both of them. Good for her. But take time or Newsweek. I'll tell you, it's a disgraceful thing, and I think, I think really they don't deserve it. In conclusion, anyone who wants a copy of this DVD, of this program, all you have to do is to call us at 625-0446, 625-0446, and we would give you this copy and plus other literature that we have explaining these issues. But we have shown you very clearly what has been going on to warn you and that you may know what the media does not show you since the media is Jewish controlled. Now the next study we would like to have is to go into scripture and explain what the Bible says about Israel, about the Jews, and about Christians, and about Jesus Christ. Christ. But pay careful attention to all that you've seen here and remember them well. And may God bless you until we meet again in Jesus' holy name. Amen.